Hi everyone. Today we will start validity. I have already discussed in my previous video reliability and all types of reliability. So I had already given you difference between reliability and validity and validity is the property by which a questionnaire measures what it is supposed to measure. If we want to measure attitude towards brands of washing machines in terms of service and product features, then that is what the critical questions in the questionnaire should measure. I mean, we can say questions should be related to your research title. Whatever is your objectives, so this questionnaire should fulfill these objectives. That is known as validity. So validity of questions on a questionnaire can be checked by comparing it with previously used items, questions, measuring the same thing and also trying out different questions to find out which one seems to measure what we intend to measure. So validity, suppose you want to take a validated questionnaire. So you can take this validated questionnaire from past published research papers. Those are previous researchers have already used these questionnaire. You can take it as it is these questionnaire or constructs from take it from different different research papers, but you have to cite these questions, these questionnaire who have used, who have actually given this particular questionnaire, these particular questions and you can cite them. Otherwise, there's the another method you have to prepare your questionnaire and please validate these questionnaire with the experts. Those are those are expert in their domain. Now we come to the validity types of validity. So here is validity is the extent to which the scores from a measure represent the variable they are intended to. As an absolute example, imagine someone who believes that people's index finger length reflects their self-esteem and therefore tries to measure self-esteem by holding a ruler up to people's index finger. Although this measure would have extremely good test retest reliability, it would have absolutely no validity. That means we want to say, might be possible Cronbeck Alpha is very good. Test retest reliability, that means there is the consistency Whatever is the people they are giving response today and after 15 days when they are giving the response, that is same. So that means reliability is very good. But that questionnaire is this method is not validated, not valid. So the fact that one person's index finger is a centimeter longer than another would indicate nothing about which one has got higher self-esteem. So discussion of validity are usually divided into several distinct types, but a good way to interpret these types is that there are other kinds of evidences in addition to reliability that should be taken into account with when judging the validity of measure. So here is, we consider three basic kinds, face validity, content validity, criterion validity, and construct validity. But we are not talking about the face validity. I am just explaining you face validity. Face validity is basically that is measuring device looks like it is measuring the correct characteristics. So basically face validity test is done by showing the instrument to experts and actual subject and analyzing their responses qualitatively simply. And expert, however, do not give much importance to face validity. So that is why face validity not in not very popular kind of validity to measure because experts, they do not believe, they do not give much importance to this kind of validity. So three order constructs are number one is content validity, criterion validity, or we can call it predictive validity also and construct validity. So one by one, we will discuss all these three kinds of validity. Number one is content validity. Content validity basically reflects to the extent to which a measurement reflects the assess the English language skills of students and develops a measurement which tests for how well these students can read such a measurement clearly, lacks content validity. 
like english language skills that includes other things besides reading writing listening etc so reading does not reflect the entire domain of behavior which characterize english language skills so we cannot say this is not the only parameter that reflects uh, a person have english language skills so that means we would consider other parameters also like writing listening etc those would say those would uh, validate english language skills so to establish content validity researcher should first define the entire domain of their study and then assess if the instrument they are using truly represent this domain so i hope content validity is clear that means we have to like it is very similar to personality like to define a per, someone's personality there are n number of parameters like 16 parameters we have to uh, define and if the person we cannot say the person is the good looking so we can say he is a his personality is very good no we cannot say because personality is defined by n number of the parameters like uh, uh, what kind of uh, dress he or she is wearing how she and he speaks how they walk what is the voice modulation each and everything how they pronounce the words each and everything that would define personality so we cannot say that is the when the all the parameters we have to uh, clearly define then only we can say this is the content validity next we come to the criterion of predictive validity basically this kind of validity means measurement should be able should be able to predict other measures of the same thing for example a student is doing well on the gmat examination she should also be well during her mba program that means we can say if somebody had qualified that criteria let's say cat examination or z examination or gmat or mat examination so if he or she is good in that particular examination he had scored good marks so we can expect we can predict this student will perform in their mba programs also whatever is the relevant course they are taking they have taken into consideration they have to give uh, their best performance so this is known as criterion or we can call it predictive validity like i had already taken into consideration this is one example the admission test of an institute may correlate highly with the final grades so here is the emphasis is on a high correlation between original measurement admission test score we can call it and later measurements the grade point average that they have received through mba program so if this is high this is a validation that our admission test is good at predicting the performance of incoming students so content validity is not very important if the criterion validity is good so we can say that means we can rely on our admission process then we come to the last kind of validity that is construct validity construct validity it is most commonly used technique in social sciences and we usually you have seen when you are going through structure equation modeling um cfa confirmatory factor analysis so at that time you are measuring construct validity so construct validity the tries to establish an agreement between the measuring instrument and theoretical concepts so basically whether your instrument and what theory this is supporting to run that particular kind of research so it is the measurement this kind of validity is, we can call it construct validity to establish construct validity one must establish a theoretical relationship and examine the empirical relationships empirical findings should then be interpreted in terms of how they clarify the construct validity so time to time we have used and i'm sure in the structure equation modeling i had already defined construct validity just go through that playlist and i will share the link of uh, structure equation modeling cfa models in this um, particular video in the description box so i hope this validity session would be good i hope you understand what is validity and types of validity so keep watching stay tuned thank you